ladies, now we are going to walk through solving two set equations. Basically, you're going to use the same process that you did with one set equation. So, my first example, I'm going to begin with 2n plus 3 is equal to 11. To solve this problem, I need to understand where I would originally start. If I knew what n was, I would follow the order of operations, which would mean I would multiply first, and then I would add, okay? But, I would multiply by 2 and then add 3. But since I don't know what n is, I now have to solve it. By solving it, that means isolating the variable, which is n. In order to solve it, I need to do the reverse. So I need to go back in this direction and do the inverse operation. So instead of adding 3, the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to subtract 3, and then I'm going to divide by 2. Now watch over here as we look through this step. So again, I'm going to write it over here, 2n plus 3 equals 11. So here I have my equations. The first step that I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. Okay? So I subtract 3 from both sides. Now when I do that, I come up with, I'm not subtracting anything in this place right here, so 2n minus 0 is 2n. I have opposites here, and whenever I have opposites, I know it becomes 0. So 2n plus 0 is equal to and then 11 minus 3 is now 8, okay? So I have 2n is equal to 8. Now, I'm not done because I still have a multiplication here, so the last step that I have to do is I need to divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2 because that's what I'm multiplying by. Now when I divide both sides by 2, I now get n is equal to 4. And this becomes my solution, n equals 4. Just as we did in one step equations, again, I can perform a check. And the check begins with writing the original equation. 2n plus 3 equals 11. I then take my solution and I substitute it in to my original problem. 2 times what plus 3 equals 11. That's what I'm trying to prove, if my answer is correct. Well, what we said was that that was equal to 4, so let's see. So now, when I go back, I go. I do multiplication first because it's order of operation, so I do this first. So 2 times 4 is 8, plus 3 is 11. And then when I add, 8 plus 3 is 11, so my answer does check. So I have a good solution. All right. So that is the basic process for solving two-step equations. Now I'm going to go to the next part, and I'm going to give a couple more examples that look very similar um, to solving two-step equations. This one will be x divided by 3 minus 4 is equal to 16. So now, in order to do this problem, the first step that I would do, if I knew x, my order of operations would say, go ahead and divide and then subtract. So that's what it says I would do. Divide by 3 and then subtract 4. But since we have to go in a reverse direction and we have to undo all that we've done, our, what we're going to do is we are going to go this way and instead of subtracting 4, we are going to add 4 and then we are going to multiply by 3. Okay? Now let's see if that works. Here's my equation. x divided by 3 minus 4 is equal to 16. Again, the first step is to add 4 right here. Let's see. Add 4 to both sides. And when I do that, I get this again cancels out. I am left with x divided by 3 plus 0 is equal to 20. So I have x divided by 3 is equal to 20. Now I'm not done. 
because I still have a division problem here. So now, in order to do this next step, I now must multiply both sides by 3. And I'm doing 3 over 1 on this side because this side is actually a fraction. And so we want to put it into how we divide or how we multiply fractions, which is numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. Okay? So when I multiply these out, it becomes 3x over 3 equals 60. And as we know, when I have the same number in the numerator and in the denominator, it's a division problem. It's 3 divided by 3, which is 1. So I have x is now equal to 60. Now that is my solution. Again, I can perform a check. I'm moving this way to the board. So here's my check for the problem. I write the original equation, which is x divided by 3 minus 4 equals 16. To check it, again, I substitute in. And my substitution is 60 divided by 3 minus 4 is equal to 16. And I'm trying to see if my side is true. When I do that, I do my division first, which is 20 minus 4 is equal to 16. I'm still trying to see if it's true. Well, 20 minus 4 is 16. Therefore, it checks. So I did a good job solving that equation. Remember, the equations aren't only used in whole numbers. You can use them in decimals as well as fractions. Let me show you a couple of examples of those. I could have a problem that looks like 2x plus 1 fourth is equal to 7 eighths. That doesn't look pretty, but it's solvable. I apply the same process where I'm actually going to Subtract the one fourth from both sides, subtract the one fourth. Okay, when I do that again, that becomes zero, and I'm left with two x is equal to. Now the question comes here: What do I do? What do I do with this? What do I do with this stuff right here? Well, in order to subtract fractions, go back and remember that I have to have a common denominator. So this has to be changed. Change the ten. This has to go back and change into eight. So now that becomes 2 eighths. So now I can go ahead and subtract, and I have 7 eighths minus 2 eighths, which is 5 eighths. Now, I still have to multiply, or I still have to do what? I have to do the division because I do have multiplication here. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide both sides by 2. You say, well, what do I do over here? Divide by 2, this is a fraction. Well, when we learned about fractions, we learned that division, we can, when we divide fractions, it is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal, okay? So when I divide by 2, it's the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. Therefore, if I have this, it becomes x is now equal to 5 16. Again, I can check it by putting it back into the equation, checking to see if it's right, and I'm good to go. Another example would be x, excuse me, 3x minus 2.8 equals 12.6. Again, you solve it the same way. You solve it the same way by adding 2.8 and then going ahead and dividing by 3. So again, I'm going to add 2.8 to both sides. All right, when I do that, these because they're opposites, they're going to cancel out. And so now I have 3x is equal to, I'm going to go ahead and add these two, and I add decimals, I line them up. Notice how I did that already. 8 plus 6 is 14, and carry the 1. 2 plus 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5, and 1. Now remember, my decimal, when I'm adding, goes straight down. It keeps in line. So now I have 3x equals 15.4. So now I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Okay, and I get x is equal to, and now I have to do some division. And if you notice, it's not going to go in evenly, which is certainly okay. You're just going to have some leftovers. So when I divide, I'm going to do division longhand. So I'm going to come down here. Remember, your bottom number, your denominator, will always go in the outside box. 3 goes into 15 five times. Okay, Subtract, just like normal, and bring down the next number. And then 3 goes into 4. Remember, I keep the decimal. I line up the decimal. I keep it right where it's at. 3 goes into the 4 one time, and there's one left over. Okay? I add a 0, and I bring it down. 3 goes into 10 three times, 
that's nine, okay, and guess what? I have one left over again. So this is going to be what they call a repeating decimal. So my answer to this problem is going to be x equals 5.13 repeating. And that is my solution. And again, I can check it as well by subtracting.